All right. Hello. I'm back with an update for the Terabits project that I introduced to you maybe earlier this week. There have been quite a few updates released by the team since I did my last video and the small but very dedicated community of Discord holders are super excited about what's been released and what's potentially to come. So I thought I would do a follow-up video to share this information with you. Do with it what you will. There is no financial advice contained in my videos. Uh, all they are uh, are just explainers to kind of try and uh, interpret things uh, so that they're easy to understand for, for all of you uh, that might not be familiar with some of the stuff that the Terabits team are utilizing. So the first update that they released was the dashboard, which has been in the works. Uh, don't forget, this is a two week old project, I think. And they've been talking about releasing a dashboard where you can view all of your holdings and how many rooms each one has mined to date. So I've got the dashboard here and I'm going to paste in the address of the top holder. <laughs> I don't know who that person is, but they have, uh, as you can see here, 115 terabits. So I've just copied their address and let's have a look. Might take a while to load it, but no, very quick. So they have 115 plots and they've mined almost a million runes, which is really cool. And I think this is ordered by the strength of the land. So they've got some pretty nice plots, daily allocation over a thousand. Mine only do between 400 and 600. So these are producing a lot of runes for this particular holder. And the other thing they did was they added a view in 3D button here. And before I click it to show you what it looks like, uh, first note the uh, subtle uh, color changes in the background when I hover my mouse around. Right, this is pretty cool. I wonder if there are any other Easter eggs. I didn't ask. But let me go back to a tweet by the team that will explain how good this 3D portion is. And they've produced... Oh, here it is. Here's the tweet. So the tweet says... 2D is cool, but 3D is cooler. We are excited to announce that you can now view and interact with your rune generating terabits in three glorious dimensions. Live now on terabits.world, which is the, the dashboard site I was showing you. And this bit here. We have partnered with BTC Substance to bring our 3D vision to reality and we are extremely excited for what the future brings. So, so keywords partner and future, right? First evolution, bringing 3D lands to life. Second evolution, question mark. Now I referenced in my last video, connecting some pieces together that make me a very, uh, ha have a positive outlook on this project. Now one of those pieces was when a person by the name of MDV joined the Discord chat and said hello. And coincidentally, I had been looking at BTC Substance ordinals for about a week before this, this event where I saw MDV in the chat. And I, was, uh, I had a couple of tabs open, uh, so I was familiar with the name. So when, when MDV hopped in, I thought, well, it's either an impersonator or the real person. So I had a bit of a chat and... Yeah, it turned out to be the real person. And I will show you MDV's Twitter profile, full stack dev creating generative art on BTC, currently developing BTC substance. So that's their project. And he's also a contractor at BTC Masterworks, which is sort of like a, an art uh, collector's club, you know, if you will. So BTC substance have their own Twitter account and they do sort of uh, giveaways of generative art using uh, I'm pretty sure their own tokens uh, I might have to look a little bit deeper into that but they are uh, tweeting about some one of one giveaways so the one of one collection you can see on Magic Eden is this and these things actually move so let me just click one of them just to show you the 
quality of what's been released by MDB. So you can, well, obviously that's a runestone. Hope you've got one or two or more would be good. I've only got one. But um, this is the kind of generative art that MDV is creating uh, using full spectrum of uh, the available functionality or recommended functionality within ordinals or inscriptions, e.g. sub uh, recursion. And uh, there is no parent child on this one, but other collections of MDVs do have parent child as well. So going back to this 3D thing, uh, let me go back to the tweet. So we have partnered with BTC Substance. So MDV has created the 3D version of the land plot. So let's click one of these, see what we get. There we go. Look at that. So this is a, a 3D representation of the plot that I just clicked, this one. And it's even got elevation, you can see here. So some uh, peaks and valleys. And if we have a look from the top, see the, the two water areas, well represented there. Uh, you can actually zoom in on this thing. Excuse the sound of my mice, my mouse wheel, but whoop, I've gone too far. See, look at that. How cool is that? And the sun. Look at the sun. Where'd the sun go? It's gone. There it is. Look at this. And I can uh, use the slider, override the time, goes into night, back in the day. Very, very cool. And I can even start recording it to share this on my Twitter, I assume. But I'm recording this on OBS anyways. So, I thought that's really good news to have, first of all, the team without MDV, without this information, was already producing some really interesting stuff using DMT, D Digital Matter Theory, along with the non-arbitrary spaces concept to try to convey what the Bitcoin block data in its raw form is telling you with numbers and things, but convey that visually. And now you've got somebody with this caliber partnering to produce the 3D lands. So what next? What next? Okay. Well, someone in the Discord was clever, clever and noticed that in this video, oh, I don't know if you can hear that. I might just reduce the volume a little bit, but this was there. I might let this run through because this was pretty well done as well. <laughs> so it's similar to what we just looked at. What's the name of this uh, backing track? It's very famous, obviously, but I don't know the name of it. <laughs> but they've they've done a really good job to to um, sync everything together. So we just went through this part. Ah, here, here it is. Uh, okay. I'll just stop here. So this team are kind of, they're very good at teasing bits and pieces of information and consistently as well, which is, which makes the thing fun. Uh, every day we kind of look forward to jumping into Discord talking amongst ourselves and occasionally the team pops in and then they tweet stuff like this. Now somebody said, if you look across the tabs on the top, so obviously the runes dashboard is there, the 3D viewer is here, and then they've got this marketplace for BRC420.io and then they, then they have a, are you reading this A Google search, which they've obviously just typed it into a Google search so, so that it would show up in the tab, right? And it's uh, the last one says, how do I sail? And they teased some kind of 3D model of a boat before. And so I remember that. Now, there's a lot to digest here, but BRC420 is the standard put forward by a, a group of people that want an open metaverse in Bitcoin. So in the same way that ERC721s uh, for Ethereum, set a standard to follow for creating NFTs. And as long as everybody follows it, then it becomes uh, widespread 
And BRC420, in a similar way, is how people would like everyone that wants to participate in, in Bitcoin Metaverse, they would like you to follow BRC420 standards so that your asset is interoperable. Now, this is the big word that was very popular back in the day. I've been in this for six years. Uh, I started off as an Animerca Brands investor, so I bought shares in that company, and they have this thing called the Sandbox, uh, which is a, a, a metaverse. Uh, it's still in development. And one of the big narratives of owning your own digital assets was that you could or you should be able to take one asset from one game and use it in another game. Now, in theory, it sounds good. But in practice, it requires a little bit more cooperation because uh, the, the game developer or the platform developer needs to create their platform so that it can easily accept these assets that are based on a particular protocol. But putting that aside, the Block Runner team, uh, by the way, that's a very good podcast, uh, super high IQ stuff they talk about there. I highly recommend you go and watch it. Uh, they talk about uh, Metaverse as well. They're all about Metaverse. And this BRC420 is, at the moment, the standard. So if you want to create a car and you want that car to be able to be used in anybody's platform or game, should they choose to include it, right? That, that, that's the key point. Then you should create the car following this BRC420 then it makes your asset more appealing as well to potential buyers because they know that they're not tied into a, a limited number of games or a specific game, for example, or a specific world or metaverse. Anyway, so that, that's the first part. Uh, so are you reading this, how to sell? Okay, so my theory is all hypothetical uh, because we, we're, we're talking about lands at the moment. I started off with Terabit lands. What do they do? They mine runes, which are going to be dropped or we claim, not sure which, hasn't been, hasn't been um, confirmed, but that we will get these tokens one way or another and they'll be called whatever. Uh, I suggested not to call it Terra Luna last time in my last video because that's got some bad history behind it. But what do you do with the tokens, right? Because they need to have some kind of use case because otherwise... It needs uh, to be a meme, a meme coin. So there are many projects right now that are coming out which allow you to pre-mine runes. And it's a funny one because there's no guarantee that these projects are going to actually drop these runes. At the moment, it's just all imaginary. You're holding these ordinals. They say they mine X runes per day, even this one, right? J just to be completely transparent, and I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm fair and not biased, right? So the only time that the tokens can be dropped is after the runes protocol is implemented. And that's ju just after halving. And even Casey Rodemore said just a few days ago that the first release is going to be alpha. It, it, expect bugs. It's an experimental protocol. Obviously, it needs uh, testing. And there are going to be things that people find that uh, weren't picked up in testing. So that aside, the main point is that the runes, whatever tokens you're mining right now, they can only be dropped after the protocol is live, right? And at that point, I would bet you that a portion of these projects, they will either run into difficulties dropping the tokens or they won't drop them at all. Because if you think about uh, NFTs in general, a lot of projects, they they disappear. So my advice is to do your own research and give yourself the best chance at uh, actually picking something up that the, the team behind it will fulfill their promises. And one of the things that I look for is technical capability. That's very important. If you don't have the technical capability, you either have to go and hire someone, which costs money, and maybe even that's difficult because there aren't that many people uh, with the knowledge for a brand new protocol, right?
way. It's not like it's been out for three years and you've got thousands of developers. This is brand new. So if you're buying into things where the team has a decent technical uh, skill set, then you're probably going to have a better chance that they will be able to, uh, like I said, fulfill on their promises. Uh, so with that being said, I'm trying to objectively um, show you that I think this team have the technical capabilities. Okay, so going back to the tokens, so what to do with the tokens, right? So I said it needs some kind of utility because uh, suppose 20 different runes projects right now that are out there, suppose they all drop the tokens a and then what? So, so you've got a whole bunch of... Uh, tokens you got millions or whatever but but what do you do with them you either need a reason for people to buy them otherwise they're worthless right so having seen these little clues in the tabs that i've uh, gone over up above it says it clearly says marketplace brc420 and if you go to this website you can find things that are already available for sale Typically, they're 3D objects. Are you reading this? How do I say it? Okay. And you've got MDV, uh, the, the, the artist, who's obviously quite capable in designing 3D objects. So my guess, and it's only a guess, is that the tokens or the runes, which we are mining, which eventually, one way or another, we'll get them in our, uh, in our possession, You'll be able to spend them to perhaps buy BRC420 uh, compatible assets. So metaverse assets. And given that this last tab says, how do I sail? Maybe there's a boat. Uh, maybe there is a, a, a really nice boat. That's BRC420. Follows the standard. You can purchase it using runes tokens, whatever the name. I just call them runes tokens because there's no name for the terabits ones uh, at this point in time. And then you will have a boat or a ship or whatever it might be that's fully interoperable in whatever worlds that choose to implement BRC420 as a standard. So that's it. That's my guess, right? Uh, I could be wrong, but I could be right. Uh, I, I don't have any inside info, obviously. I'm not part of the team, but I think it's a pretty good guess. And I've been having a look at these BRC420 marketplaces, and some of the things sell for ridiculous amounts of money. And I don't think we are anywhere near uh, the even the early 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 stages of metaverse on bitcoin because a lot of things have moved so fast and so many new advancements have come out within the last year that i don't think the real um let, let's say the the big group of hardcore devs they haven't come to bitcoin yet there's some already and they are the ogs right but uh, there are still a lot of builders on other chains that eventually, I think, will look at Bitcoin and say, hey, <laughs> the, the whole world's onto this thing. You know, I, I think I should go and build over there. And when that happens and when a lot of these people actually participate, that's the key, you know, because five, six years ago, Sandbox, terrific idea, but the scripting was very difficult. Oh, sorry, not difficult, very limited. Uh, there was no ability to integrate custom scripting. So you were limited to what the game maker will allow you to do. Walk this way or put a monster here. The monster has this much life and he has certain attributes and behaviors, etc. Right? No, no custom scripting like you can do on Roblox, for example. So it never really took off. I don't think it's a dead concept. Uh, in terms of the, the whole metaverse thing. I think it just needed a few turns, a few tries before someone finally uh, finds the, the magic button. Uh, either that or the actual participation numbers increase to a point where 
it just becomes like self-spreading you know so if if 5,000 people come and play or 10,000 people come and play and if it's an enjoyable experience then they will start telling people and then the, the ball gets rolling the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it just goes full speed down the hill and you can't stop it so this is this is a, a point in time where I think we are extremely early and in relation to the terabits project itself I think that there is a lot of reward for very little risk uh, considering the entry point right now is 0 .0, 0 0.0045 very affordable the holder count has been increasing I think it's about up 25 or so maybe four I think it was like four three six in my last video I'd have to go and check but it's gone up like 30 maybe 35 people in in less than a week and it's getting more noise uh, you you've seen now there's some confirmed heavy hitters starting to join or maybe they were already in it from the beginning and and we're only finding out now but uh basically that is it uh i do think more so than last time that the potential in this project is huge and given that now the brc420 component has been teased uh, i suppose you could say that's an even bigger um sea full of fish or will be full of fish because you're no longer isolated and so now you've got now you've got uh, if i'm right of course <laughs> so if if we are to be able to claim or purchase BRC420 assets, then they are going to be desirable. The bigger the, the Bitcoin metaverse gets, the more OG and more desirable these early items will become. So, yes, uh, that, I, think, I think I've given a pretty good explanation of what's been happening in the last week and if they keep releasing more things i'm gonna to have to do a, a video each week but i think you i think you will enjoy the content so i appreciate all the likes and comments and retweets etc and yeah i will see you again for another video i think i mentioned like uh doing a video of another project i have my eyes on but that'll have to wait whilst i digest more of this terabit stuff Okay, so if you're interested, uh, jump in on the Discord, even before you buy. You can uh, come in and ask questions and say hello. And The team are quite responsive. The holders are really good people. Uh, oh, and another thing, another thing I forgot to mention. So the, there was a, a Twitter space between um, the NatCats founder. He did his very first Twitter space this week, last week, sorry, in the last five days or so. And Terabits were, were a speaker along with um, either Will or um, Iman from Iman from the Blockrunner team. I think one of them was there. And uh, it was hosted by, the name escapes me and I, and I do apologize, but let me just tell you this. The space was high IQ, very high IQ. I very rarely am able to stay in a Twitter space typically because I can't stand all the shouting and, and people who know me, they've heard me say this many times, I don't like the LFG, bro, like all that kind of stuff. It's, it really gets to me because it's, it's just not, first of all, it's not me. And second of all, I don't feel like I'm learning much in those spaces where they're just shouting things and like to the moon and all that kind of stuff like uh, give me some substance give me some meat that uh you know that, that, that makes me think and, and really want to know what's going on so this space that i'm talking about they were just discussing concepts how to progress things uh, what is what is the potential of dmt etc and it was so high iq that i felt like it was worth my time 
listening into it. And I wanted to jump on and ask a question, but I, unfortunately I was uh, too late. I joined in towards the end, so I had to go listen to it on, on replay. But um, it's the kind of space where you make connections with good people, people that are going to be uh, p- potentially shaping the way this space moves, uh, specifically in relation to DMTs and metaverses and stuff like that. So that was the core of um, the people that were up there. That's the kind of stuff they're working on. And Terabits was on there too. So it feels like a fairly tight-knit community, like a family where it's not like a project is competing for um, people's money. You know, because if you just launch something in isolation, then ultimately you're trying to market that versus every other project that's also launched in isolation. But uh, if you're looking into things like BRC420, which is very much, it's an open standard, right? So you're contributing to something that is a lot bigger. And I think that's probably one of the best ways to, to make it. Know, to, to win so highly recommend going in checking out that space on replay and who knows maybe i'll get an invitation to go and speak at uh one of these things uh very soon so anyway that's all i have so thank you again for watching and listening and i will catch you in another video Bye bye